and welcome to the next edition of Cooking with Batman, the pork back ribs. Now before I start any preparation at all, I'm going to start by water boiling. Pot of water on high heat. That's it. That's how we start. Next, we're going to be handling food. Remove your crime fighting gloves, start washing your hands. Remember to use soap. One hand washes the other. Now, not too, too important to get everything off your hands because you're going to be handling raw meat and you're going to be boiling it. So, let's start going over what we've got. Pork back ribs and a kniffy. Oh. Oh, yeah. Slice open those ribs. Remember, if they're not on sale, you did bad. What you want to do is you want to wait until they go on sale, and you're going to get them at the lowest possible price. Ah, it's good stuff. So, you're going to notice that one end is thicker than the other. At this larger end, you're going to want to get about two rib bones in every slice. Huh? Like that. Got some cartilage in there. Oh yeah. It's okay. The people who are eating it can just eat right around it. They don't care. Look we'll at it. Let us work our way right through. It's all good. Uh, Dethawing them is apparently a good idea too. Just have a little bit of tearing to do here. It's okay. No one's going to know the difference in the end anyway. Next. Yeah, right about there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's a bony. Some bony ones here. There we go. Uh -huh. Be afraid to get your hands bloody. What, the counter? Don't worry about the counter. You can clean that off later. Everything can get cleaned and sterilized. Just keep on chopping. Life goes in the sink. Start taking all these lovely chunks of meat, put them right in your water. Don't worry that it's not boiling yet. Now the reason we're putting them into water is because we're just going to get them a little bit of pre-cooking and it's going to take some of the, uh, the blood and fat off of them. You're going to see, I like fat too, it's got a lot of flavor points in it, but in this case, you want to get the gristly fat off. And if you're afraid of making a mess, well, use two pots, because you're going to have a lot of overflow, just like I am. Oh, yeah. What? I don't even care. I don't even care. I'm that awesome. Now, before you handle the next ingredients, you're going to want to wash your hands again. Use lots of soap. There we go. Eh. Eh. That takes care of a bunch of the water. Okay. Let's go over the ingredients one at a time. Grab yourself a bowl big enough for some decent mixing. Put it there. Paprika. Are you guys noticing a trend? Paprika goes in everything. Oh, yeah. Good amount of paprika. See, that's a jumbo sized bag. Next ingredient. I prefer chicken and rib barbecue sauce. You can use whatever kind you like, but it won't turn out as good as mine unless you use chicken and rib. We're going to use the whole bottle. Ah. 
But Batman, there's so much barbecue sauce left in that bottle. Relax, I got you covered. One of the ingredients that we want is vinegar. So we're actually going to use the vinegar as our cleaning solution for the bottle. Pour it in. Put the cap back on. Give it a shake. There. Bottle's done. Next item. Ketchup. Lots of it. Um, approximately the same amount as you put for barbecue sauce. Um, use Heinz ketchup. That's an order. Okay, um, it's not a direction, it's not a recommendation. Use Heinz. That's enough. I won't speak of that anymore. <sighs> Next up, the secret ingredient. Golden yellow sugar, where you can use dark brown sugar, whatever. Just so make sure it's golden yellow or brown or one of those amazing colors of yummy sugar. Lots of it. Oh yeah. Now, if for, that's approximately two cups for those of you who are obsessed with measurements. Two and a half cups? Yeah, somewhere in there. If you've got clumpy brown sugar, um, add a drop of water to it in a bowl, put it in the microwave for a few seconds, take a fork, mash it around, you're good to go. Everything's done. Uh, we're going to add some more vinegar. Mmm, that's going to smell pungent when it's cooking. That's really good. That's what we want out of it. Okay. And, uh, the next one, mustard powder. Trust me on this one. This draws out the flavor in your meat. If this stuff doesn't burn your eyes when you smell it, you did it wrong. Let's go ahead. Mustard, powder it up. Now this stuff is very concentrated, so uh, don't go overboard. But if you do, it's okay. And we're gonna start mixing. Mmm. That's your sauce. Next up, you're going to prep your slow cooker. Alternatively, you can bake your ribs. Slow cooker, like I'm using, you can't get a flavor crisp out of it unless you're reheating your ribs. But if you're baking them, you can get a flavor crisp. We'll get into that just a little bit more at the end because I'm using the slow cooker. We won't touch on the baking recipe too, too much, but we will give you some information. So the next step is we're actually gonna let these ribs boil Okay, and we're going to make sure that every piece is done. Um, I'd say a solid seven to eight minutes of hard boiling. You can start picking the ones off at the bottom, and I will show you how to properly stack them inside of your slow cooker in the next segment. I'll see you in 10 minutes. All right, boiling should be complete. Let's turn off the stove. Did you take that uh, little break? To clean up your workstation? I certainly did. So, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this pot of boiled ribs, put it right there. Good stuff. We're going to take our tongs and uh, we're going to start placing these very, very specifically. Okay, you're going to notice that they're all U shaped, right? Don't let the meaty parts of your meat touch the edges or they will burn. So, Bone to the edge. Okay, you're going to build an outer perimeter like that. Next. Bones to the edges. I will show you an overhead snapshot immediately following this scene. Okay. Bones to the edges. It's going to look like we're wasting our space, if you're doing it right. Okay, there should have been a lot of gristle on top of your water if you boiled them long enough too. Okay. There we go. 
We're just building a hollow in the middle. Alright. Oh, we can't use that piece yet. There we go. Okay. Now all we have, because this is the shot that I wanted to show you. See? Yes, I know that's perfectly visible. Good. By the way, your meat, although it may have some remnants of blood on it, should be perfectly edible without any sort of food poison at this point. If it's not, then uh, you did it wrong. Again. So this is an end piece. This is very, very meaty. What we want to do is we want to place this one downward, right in that hollow in the middle so that the meat is facing up. Every time you're doing this, you have to try to consider that the bones are curved like this. You want the bones clawing at everything to keep the meaty, fleshy deliciousness away. Mm. And then you can start building a little roof on top of your house here. Uh, you want to try to get as much space as possible so that the juices can flow between them. But remember, you still need to close this. If you don't have a good seal on your crock pot at the end of this, your steam is going to escape and you will have dry meat. That's just how it is. There we go. So we built a little house. And our last piece is going to go in the middle. It's going to straddle right over the top. Just like that. Feel around the pot. Nothing else there. Don't care. Next, our delicious, sweet, golden sugared sauce. I'm just going to dump it. Dump it on top. Oh, yes. Mm. By the way, did I mention that I'm not eating these until tomorrow? Yeah. So, this is my before bed project. have here are a preparation for tomorrow's dinner. The ribs are all sitting in here. You're going to put your lid on this. You're going to put it in the fridge. You want these to cook for four to eight hours. Okay? Uh, four hours, they're going to be tasty and cooked. Six hours, they're going to be tender, tasty and cooked. Eight hours, they're going to be very tender. Very, very tender. The bones are going to fall out if you tug on them. You start going above the eight hour mark, you're going to start burning your meat. Um, the fleshy ones that are closest to the edges are going to be the ones to start. And they're going to have a tougher feel to them. The bones will still fall out, but the meat will just not have the right flavor. So the sweet spot is probably eight hours, but it's acceptable anywhere from four to ten. Aim for eight. I will see you tomorrow when I pull these out, okay? So I'm going to put them in the crock pot, and when you see me, they're going to have been in the crock pot for six to eight hours. I'll see you tomorrow. Greetings, and welcome to tomorrow. I call it tomorrow because your pork back ribs are not done yet. Mine are. So, I set my alarm clock for 11 o'clock this morning, and I put these ribbies in. It's now been about six to seven hours, so they're not perfect, but they're so damn close that I'm watering at the mouth. We call it drooling, but the polite way is to say watering, so we'll go with that. <clears throat> so, go ahead and turn off your slow cooker, which has been on low heat this entire time, because I neglected to say it earlier. If you've been using a slow cooker, then they're all set to go. If you were cooking in the oven, now is the time that you're going to prepare your sides and turn on the Flavor Crisp. If you don't know what a Flavor Crisp is, go take a look at any other video. Thank you. Okay, so remove your lid. Let it drip. Mmm, they look like I basted them every hour and a half up until this point. Ah, uh, okay, you understand, very good. Now, as always, when serving for your guest, you're going to want to make everything look really nice. The big white plate, 
normally does good. When you're serving for your guests, you want to get them the hottest, most tender ribs. So you're not going to take the meaty one off the top. No, no, no. You're going to dig for one of your little wall ribs at the side. And remember, it is lovely when people ask for seconds. So only give them one set of two ribs there. Put that right on their plate, just like that. That's good to go, okay? And then you're gonna grab your sides. And if you need instructions on how to make sides, go take a look at my first video, where I made a $6 chicken. Give you all the instructions on how to make a side right there. And uh, in this case, we have peas. Just gonna put some peas there. Remember, the meat is the star, so, so don't overcrowd them with anything that they feel obligated to eat. Uh, next up, we have potatoes. The best part about the potatoes is instead of gravy, you can use your rib sauce. Very sweet, very tasty. Mm -hmm. There we go. And uh, see, this, this plate of potatoes happens to be my bowl. So we can just pour the remainder in there, that's good. If they want seconds, they can have meat. Okay, that's just how it works around here. Now if we're gonna go over to our rib dish. We're going to take some sauce. Go like this. Mmm, yes. Put a little bit of sauce on everything. Voila! Pork back ribs. Ta-da! Yum! There's your star. Still steamy, still hot, everything is beautiful. Now, I told you I would tell you a little secret about the flavor crisp, and I'm going to. Here's a secret. These ribs do not have to stay in this pot. Next time you go to reheat them, put them in the oven. Put them on the oven on broil, okay? Set it to 200 degrees Celsius or 350, whatever you want Fahrenheit. Let them get warm and then broil them. Broil them for like five minutes. They're gonna get crispy and tender and just mwah, yum. Anyways, let's, uh, let's prepare my meal so you can see how this looks. Now remember, I'm not the guest, so I can go ahead and take one of these meaty ones off the top. Maybe another one, because I don't care if I don't have to ask for seconds. Grab our spoon here. Oh yeah. That's it. You know what takes too long? Spoons. You know what doesn't take very long? Your baster. So let's go ahead and just grab that. There we go. There we go. That's how you eat like a man. Let your guests eat however they want to. Guest, me. Guest, me. Bon appetit!